This is a problem that has never happened before. SpaceX has just officially revealed the cause of the terrifying Ship 36 explosion at the Massey site. It's a tough blow for SpaceX. Ship 36, a strong candidate for the next flight, exploded during a full six-engine static fire test. The ship was almost completely vaporized in a massive fireball, leaving nothing but wreckage around the Massey test site. So, what exactly happened? And after this catastrophe, how will it affect SpaceX's roadmap going forward? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Starship explosion has become a trending topic across the internet after Ship 36 exploded during fueling operations at the Massey site. The incident quickly made headlines worldwide. At around 11 p.m. local time on June 18th, Ship 36 was being prepared for a full six-engine static fire test. The process involved loading liquid methane and liquid oxygen into the vehicle at the Massey test site, located just a few kilometers from Starbase's main launch pad. Suddenly, a powerful explosion occurred. It was so quick that no one could react in time. A massive fireball lit up the night sky, and the blast was visible from up to 30 miles away. The explosion completely destroyed Ship 36 and caused a fire to spread to nearby fuel tanks, escalating the damage across the site. The full extent of the damage is still unknown, but what caught everyone's attention was Elon Musk's remarkably calm reaction. Just a scratch, he said, a surprisingly casual remark considering the scale of the explosion. While many were still shocked by the blast, Musk downplayed the incident as a minor setback that wouldn't significantly affect ongoing operations at SpaceX. He also shared an early explanation of what might have gone wrong. Preliminary data suggests that a nitrogen COPV in the payload bay failed below its proof pressure, Musk noted. That mention of TOPVs immediately brought something else to mind. The COPV tanks from Ship 35 that recently washed up on a Mexican beach earlier this month. Those particular tanks were designed to store high-pressure helium, used to spin up the engine's turbo pumps during critical phases like boost back or landing burns. They were made by Luxfer, a longtime supplier of composite overwrapped pressure vessels for SpaceX. Because these are composite pressure vessels, they operate under extremely high pressure, and when they fail, they can release a massive amount of energy. In its latest announcement, SpaceX confirmed Initial analysis indicates the potential failure of a pressurized tank known as a COPV, or composite overwrapped pressure vessel, containing gaseous nitrogen in Starship's nose cone area. They also said that the COPVs used on Starship share no commonality with those on Falcon rockets. Still, the incident feels eerily similar to what happened during the Falcon 9 AMOS-6 explosion back in 2016. In that case, a COPV containing helium in the rocket's second stage failed. More specifically, the liner inside the helium tank buckled, trapping liquid oxygen between the liner and the carbon overwrap. As pressure built up, the trapped LOX, or even solid oxygen, combined with friction or a carbon fiber rupture, triggering a fire and ultimately a catastrophic explosion. What makes the COPV theory even more convincing is that both the Starship and Falcon 9 incidents happened during the preparation phase for a static fire test, not during flight. Let's go back to that dramatic moment when Ship 36 began to explode. At first, we saw jets of what looked like cryogenic fluid spraying out, not from the main fuel tanks, but from the nose cone area. Now on the Starship Vive 2 design, the liquid oxygen tank is located at the base, the liquid methane tank sits above that, and at the very top is the PIA's dispenser payload bay. But more importantly, there are also two smaller header tanks running along the body of the ship. In this upgraded version of Starship, there's still a methane header and an oxygen header tucked inside the nose cone, connected by a feed line that runs along the side with the heat shield tiles. From what we can tell, the ship appeared to split along that exact area. It's possible that a composite overwrapped pressure vessel, a COPV, may have failed, triggering a pressure-related issue, which then caused the explosion linked to one of the upper header tanks. Fortunately, since the vehicle hadn't lifted off, there were no injuries or casualties, a point SpaceX quickly confirmed in an official statement. There are no hazards to residents and surrounding communities, and we ask that individuals do not attempt to approach the area while safing operations continue. The company also confirmed that all personnel had been safely evacuated from the test site prior to the incident, 
and everyone was accounted for and reported safe afterward. Emergency response teams were quick to act. Firefighters from the Brownsville Fire Department were promptly dispatched to the scene to assist with containment and safety operations. The company has also released more details about the incident. Previous independent tests on the materials used inside Starship, including toxicity analyses, confirmed that they pose no chemical, biological, or toxicological risks. SpaceX is now coordinating with local, state, and federal agencies as appropriate, especially regarding environmental and safety concerns. Fortunately for them, the explosion happened in Texas. If it had occurred in California, SpaceX might have faced lawsuits worth tens of millions of dollars. On top of that, the estimated cost of Ship 36 alone ranges between 70 to 90 million dollars. Repairs to the Massey site will also require additional spending, though nothing too extreme. Human lives always come first, and it's a huge relief that no one was caught in the blaze. But one thing's for sure, this incident will undoubtedly have a negative impact on SpaceX's timeline and development progress. The first thing to acknowledge is that SpaceX's Starship testing schedule is now facing a minimum one-month delay, possibly up to two. Ship 36 was originally slated for the 10th test flight, which was tentatively set for late June. In fact, an FAA filing had pointed to June 29th as the potential launch date for this next suborbital test. But following this explosion, the timeline has been thrown into uncertainty. The next flight is almost certainly postponed. The issue now shifts to Ship 37, the prototype next in line to take on Ship 36's mission. However, it's still undergoing final assembly with its Raptor engines and thermal protection system, especially the heat shield tiles, yet to be fully installed. That means additional time will be needed to bring it up to flight readiness. But here's something critical to remember. Every starship must go through a full cryo test and static fire before launch. And right now, Massey's testing infrastructure is heavily damaged. The explosion not only destroyed Ship 36, but also obliterated the static fire stand itself. In simple terms, even if Ship 37 were fully assembled and ready to go today, there's nowhere to test it. Some have suggested moving the static fire to launch Pad A, or possibly Pad B, which is reportedly nearing operational status. But that opens up a new risk. If Ship 37 were to fail during testing there, it could damage the launch tower itself. That would take SpaceX from a delay to a complete disaster, especially since Starship 5-2 prototypes have had a spotty track record so far. So, realistically, SpaceX will need to rebuild the Massey testing stand first, which could take several weeks. Thankfully, the setup at Massey isn't as complex as a full launch pad, and SpaceX has plenty of experience bouncing back fast, like after the Falcon 9 AMOS 6 explosion that damaged SLC-40 in 2016. Well, it's a setback, but nothing SpaceX hasn't handled before. If you believe SpaceX can get everything back on track in just one month, drop a one in the comments. By the way, we're working hard to bring you more exciting content on space and tech. As we push toward 150,000 subscribers, your support means the world to us. Thanks a lot. Here's an even more interesting detail. Many believe the FAA would step in and require a full investigation after this incident, just like with previous Starship failures. But here's the twist. Static fire tests like this one aren't under FAA jurisdiction. The FAA only regulates launches that enter airspace, not ground-based tests. So in this case, the FAA won't be demanding an investigation. Instead, SpaceX will handle it internally. Still, if SpaceX continues to experience similar issues or raise safety concerns, the FAA or other agencies could step in with tighter regulations down the line. And beyond regulations, this kind of incident could put a lot of pressure on SpaceX's engineering teams, especially if they're now racing to fix the problem or improve their systems. However, it's worth noting that SpaceX has a strong track record of learning from failure. Time and time again, they've turned setbacks like this into opportunities to improve both their technology and processes. For example, back in 2008, SpaceX was on the verge of bankruptcy after three consecutive Falcon 1 failures. At the time, they had about $100 million in funding, including Elon Musk's own money from selling PayPal. The first three launches burned through nearly half of that. According to Musk, before their fourth and final attempt in September 2008, 
SpaceX only had about 20 to 30 million dollars left in the bank. He even said it was the last chance. If they failed again, the company would go under. But luckily on September 28, 2008, SpaceX successfully launched Falcon 1 into orbit. It was the first time a privately funded company had ever done so, marking a major milestone that proved their capability. Not long after, NASA awarded SpaceX a $1.6 billion contract to deliver cargo to the ISS using Falcon 9 and Dragon. That contract was the financial lifeline that helped pull SpaceX out of crisis and set them on the path to becoming what they are today. And this time is no different. With three consecutive explosions, Flight 7, Flight 8, and Flight 9, plus another one that happened before liftoff with Ship 36, these setbacks could become powerful motivation for SpaceX to grow even stronger. Especially now, with the backing of the world's richest man, money isn't really the problem anymore. The real challenge is time. Right now, Ships 37 and 38 are still part of the Block 2 design. It's not until Ship 39 that we officially move into Block 3 territory. So basically, after just two more flights, we'll see a major shift. That change should help eliminate the remaining issues from Block 2 and make the system way more stable moving forward. Block 3 isn't just about upgrades, it's about cutting costs and boosting profits. Instead of spending 30 to 40 million dollars per Falcon 9 launched to send up Starlink satellites, Starship can do the job for as little as 10 million dollars, maybe even less. And it can carry five times more payload. In the long run, this isn't just cost saving, it's a real game changer. More profit, more scale. That's exactly why more and more countries are choosing SpaceX to launch their satellites. When you're cheaper and more reliable, what competitor can really keep up? And that trust is clearly paying off. SpaceX just landed a massive $5.9 billion contract with the U.S. Space Force, while Lockheed Martin got $5.3 billion for 19 missions. Blue Origin question mark. Just $2.3 billion. With SpaceX emerging as the clear winner in the program, Elon Musk didn't hold back when calling out the competition on X, his own social media platform. Winning 60% of the missions may sound generous, but the reality is that all SpaceX competitors combined cannot currently deliver the other 